Hi there. Hi, how are you, Chandra? I'm good, Renee. How are you? Fantastic. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, let's get this thing going. Awesome. We are live on YouTube, the Car Jones Unlimited LLC YouTube channel with the Unfiltered with Car Jones Unlimited LLC podcast. You, my love, are my featured guest this evening, Mrs. Renee Cunningham, CEO and owner of Legacy Protection. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so very much, Chandra. This is such a pleasure to be here today, and I'm excited to talk to people about credit and financial literacy. So uh, let's get going. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell me, you and I had some conversations, and you know, I am a licensed realtor in the state of Alabama, soon to be Texas, and we had talked about financial literacy. What exactly does financial literacy mean? Well, first of all, I'd like to back up and just tell you a little bit. Uh, first of all, we were not taught these keys in school. So today we're going to talk and basically have you give you a roadmap on how to go down that yellow brick road. Just like when you were growing up and you watched the Oz or uh, the Wiz, uh, you in turn had to go down the yellow brick road to get to Oz. So today we're going to talk about tools and tips so that you and your family can make wise financial decisions today. So financial literacy in a nutshell is just learning how to handle money, how to make money, but more importantly, how to keep it to pass on a legacy. That's where legacy protection came from. We wanted to be able to pass the keys on to our family, uh, one generation after another. I love it, I love it. You know, it, it's really important um, to be able to leave something to your loved ones, your children, you know, and. But I asked her, since we're talking about financial literacy, what exactly does that mean? Renee, if you don't mind rehashing that for us, I would greatly appreciate it. No problem, Chandra. Thank you folks so very much once again for allowing me the opportunity to talk to individuals. First of all, I like to tell people financial literacy is in its basis nutshell. First of all, we weren't taught this in school, but it is the roadmap to how to save money, how to make money, and how to pass on a legacy to your children. Uh, talking about your net worth, also talking about saving plans and budgeting, and your credit, and how important that is. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the roadmap. Um, I love to specialize in credit restoration, so we're gonna go into that piece itself. Most people don't realize, when you first realize that you have a problem, is when you walk into a dealership, or you're trying to buy a home, or get a credit card, and they say you're denied. What do you do? You're stuck there. So the first thing you want to do in that roadmap, guys, is to identify what is on your credit report. There's three credit reports. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. But more importantly, pulling those credit reports. Everyone gets one for free under annualfreecreditreport.com. And you have the ability to actually see what's on there. Now, to obtain the score, you do need to pay for that. But to actually see what other creditors are seeing for you, that's the first thing. That's month number one. You will get your report and then analyze it. First of all, to make sure those things are true and honest. It may be things I found that a lot of people that name their children junior or senior or the third, they have their dad's bills on there or their, their child, their, the child has their children's bills on there. So you wanna identify that first month, what is on your credit report. Then secondly, the second to third month, if you need to establish credit itself, how do you do that? That's either through a secure credit card or becoming an authorized user. And I'm gonna slow down. Authorized user means that you have someone already that has a wonderful credit rating. They can have an Amex card or a Macy's card and they put you on as someone that is a, that has the access to use that card. And hence, authorized user. You can use that gas card or you can use that um, Amex card instead of your mom or your dad or your husband. The benefit of using that card and being an authorized user is that you get the credit history that they have. It allows you to establish credit. Month three through uh, five, you're actually building credit by making on-time payments, uh, addressing any negative items that you may see on that credit report by writing to those individuals, uh, getting that items removed or updated for you. 
You're also really looking at your net worth, developing a budget. How are you using the money that you have to make wise decisions with spending uh, your spending habits? Are you going out to eat every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Because I am a girl. I went to school. I have a master's degree. And I always vowed that I was going to eat lunch out. I, I worked too hard to go home. I was going to buy. And that was my treat to myself. So I understand and I don't put any type of a shame if you like to eat out. Just put it in the budget. And you don't have to go have a sit down meal. You may have to go somewhere to a, a truck or something. So putting that in the budget so you're able to move forward successfully. What's your goal? Are you looking to buy a house? Are you looking to do something where you need to have your credit to get a secure a business loan? Are you looking to be able to help your children? What's your goal? So those first six months are very imperative in that roadmap to recovering and establishing and understanding your finances itself. That's a part of that financial literacy. Thanks, Sean. Awesome. Awesome. You know, you said something very key. I um, worked in the field of finance and accounting for 30 plus years. And one thing that I found, you know, um, in, in talking to people just in general, as well as practicing as a realtor and um, a mortgage lender, was that people often don't understand the importance of a budget. A budget, <laughs> expenses, and revenue. And so I'm glad that you brought that point up because you were pointing to credit and yes. one of the questions that I received as I began to advertise this um, interview tonight um, had to do with first-time home buyers or purchasing a home okay and you know yes. with the present um, economic climate as a result of the pandemic the interest rates are extraordinarily good they and are. so a lot of people are considering purchasing a home, right? That is correct. They are doing and it. So, okay, so I wish that you would speak to the importance of that FICO score and what exactly does that FICO score mean and how does a budget play into that? Thank you very much. So first of all, let me break down the definition, FICO. Fair Isaac Corporation. It is a calculation that is used to determine your credit worthiness. Now, there's so many people that say, well, when we were growing up, cash was king. I had money at the house. Cash it was king. But when you go to buy an apartment or you go to buy a house, you need to have something on those credit, on those credit reports that in turn show your credit worthiness. So, uh, the reason that we wanted to make this very plain to you all regarding that fair uh, Isaac Corporation, there is a new score that was actually uh, introduced in the month of July. They told us, uh, told us about it in January, but with the pandemic and things of that nature, we really kind of lost track of that. But in July, there was something that was introduced called the FICO 10. Now, FICO 10 uses your credit history for the last two years. Now, why is that so important? Life is a cycle. We understand that things happen. You may have gotten laid off of work. You may have had to miss a payment because you need to take care of a sick child, medical bills, things of that nature. But if the credit reports are now weighing in on your payment history for the last 24 months, and they're actually, it, it weighs more now. It used to weigh, and I have the little, it, there we go. It used to weigh anywhere between 10 and 15% of your credit score. Now it's going up to that 15 to 20%. So if your low credit score was low, it's going to go lower. If your credit score was high, it's going to go higher. So what that means for us in layman's terms is that if you know that in the last two years, you've had some bumps and bruises in the road, we need to get that taken care of immediately. Uh, there is something called the Fair Credit Act that can be leveraged to in turn remove those negative items off your credit report. This FICO 10 was made specifically to hurt those that are already low. So you need to be able to understand the formula, but more importantly, know that the game changes and we need to change with it. Okay, so this is really good information. And just paraphrasing what you're saying that effective July, 
there has been some major changes in how credit is reported via the bureaus. Correct. And so the requirements yes. to secure a mortgage loan have changed. That is correct. Um, and let's go a little bit into our self-employed individuals. I've been self-employed since 2003. And uh, the thing that I, I feel really bad for in this time, especially those are out there, even if you had anything to do with the SBA loans lately or EIDL, and those are just loans for small business uh, owners itself that the government had released started in March during this pandemic. Okay, so let's talk about small business owners. If you are a small business or self-employed, it doesn't matter if you're a musician, if you're an artist, if you are a painter, if you're a cab driver, if you are a Uber driver, if you are Uber Eats, if you are listed as self-employed, the criteria for you, yeah, Uber Eats now, yes, they have to have some drivers out there. And I know they love my house, that and DoorDash. So uh, my husband, and I just give you guys, we're like the dynamic duo, he is a mortgage underwriter. So what that is, that's the person that looks at your credit and says, yes, you are approved, but unfortunately you're not. He also is the one to look at your credit and say, we will approve you, but we need this bank statement or we need to have proof of funds. He's the person that actually verifies your income, verifies your uh, assets as well as your credit in order to get the qualify for the home. So I brought in him as well to get a little bit more clarity. So let's talk. Prior to... And that earring, I knew I was going to lose that. <laughs> Prior to March 2020, a self-employed income individual could provide the last year, two years of tax returns and bank statements, the last two years, to prove their income. The change is, additional to those last two year tax returns, you need a balance sheet showing your Mm. What you're actually spending versus your expended your income versus your expenses. Also, you need two months bank statements, a profit and loss statement certified by your tax preparer. Whoa. So all y'all using tax or uh, using Whoa. what's that? Uh, yeah, that's the big thing. Yes. All of you all using what's that uh turbo tax and all that stuff? Turbo. It's not gonna yeah. fly. Nope. You need a certified tax preparer. That profit and loss has to be certified by them. Those last two years, I mean, last two months bank statement. That's for conventional. Okay. Yeah, so we want to make sure that you're able to understand that the rules have changed and that everything that you do now in your business bank account is documented and proven. So let's talk a little bit about during the pandemic. A lot of us weren't able to go out and make money the traditional way. They're not going to penalize you if it is in the exact same industry. So I was giving Chandra the example that uh, I believe a musician had made or asked this question itself. So if you have income from not just going out playing an instrument, now you write music or you're at home and you're composing or you're arranging, but you're getting income for that business itself, that can be used as a source of income. So we have to be able to think outside the box, staying in the parameters of your business scope, but being able to think smarter and not hard, work smarter and not harder during this time. Mm -hmm. Can't hear you. Yes. So I want to make sure that all of my self-employed individuals hear me very clearly because I, I definitely had a couple of personal friends that were in the process of purchasing a home. If your application was in the system anywhere between March all the way up to June 25th, they used the old rules. After June 25th, all the new rules applied. So be very, very uh, mindful that if you're going forth trying to apply for a home or acquire property, that you're going to need a tax preparer to prepare that profit and loss statement. Your last two months of your bank statements must be up to par and be able to be scrutinized by an under mortgage underwriter because it is doable. Like Chandra said, the interest rates are fantastic and we want you to be able to accure or a obtain a home, but you got to be able to get through some of this new red tape. 
The red tape is horrendous. <laughs> it's not even tape anymore. It's like one big sheet. <laughs> So I just, I really, I'm, I have a heart and a passion for my self-employed individuals because we have a heart and we have a dream in our heart. We knew that we were not made for corporate America. No, no, no kick against corporate America, but everybody cannot follow those rules the same way. They have something inside their heart. They have a passion. They have drive for something else different. And to be penalized for that because it doesn't add up on paper is very disheartening. So we want to give you the keys. Like I said, we're going to follow that roadmap. Go down that yellow brick road so you're able to acquire that home that you're looking for. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, Renee, people are often afraid to pull their credit reports. What do you have to say about how often a person should pull their credit report? And when they pull it, what is, I know you can't rec, you know, tell a person which um, resource to use, but if you might suggest a few, two or three. I would love to. First of all, let's back up. For those of you that may not know or not aware, there's three different types, three uh, credit reporting agencies, and they are for profit. So what that means is that they get paid by the creditors to report onto their with bureaus. So you got TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Experian is out of Atlanta and Equifax is out of um, was that Allen, Texas, and then TransUnion is out of Chester, Pennsylvania. You can pull your credit. Now there's a difference between pulling your credit for the information or do you want the score? And I think all of you all want to know what your score is. So the score I subscribe to personally, I like to pay for my score. And the reason I like to pay for my score is because I want to see all three credit reports and I want to yeah. know the difference between all three. So I personally recommend Experian app. So mm -hmm. on your smartphone or on your Android phone, download the Experian app. Mm -hmm. It's an E and it allows you opportunity for less than $20 to get your credit report all for all three. They refresh it every month. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to know that because people that report to TransUnion may not necessarily report to Equifax. And that's what my number one question people ask, well, why is the, the score so different? Why do, when you go to apply for a loan, they always say, well, we're gonna use your median, your median score. That's the lowest one or the one in the middle. Uh, it is because different creditors report to different credit bureaus. So that's why we have to get an average of the three itself. We also want to let you know, how is your credit score actually calculated? Guys, this is worth you writing it down or recording this and taking your time. So the first one, the biggest part of your credit score is your payment history. That mm -hmm. is if you were 30 days late, 60 days late, 90 days late, 120 days late, or if it was a charge off, how long was it? Was it, did it happen every month, every six months? <laughs> I have a running joke where they say, well, should I co-sign for someone? Never, ever co-sign for anyone. Because I believe that every six months something happens in your life. It's either the 4th of July when you got to pay for a rib or Christmas time when you want to get an extra gift for somebody. They always have an excuse. So never co-sign. 30% uh, of your score is calculated about the amount you owe. This is where people talk about the word capacity. Now, the way this is very simple is that you have a $1,000 credit card. Out of that $1,000 credit card, the max that you should be using and have it report to the credit bureau is $300. That's 30% of that 1000 that is the bare minimum. It's not enough for you just to pay on time. And I'm going to show you why. On time payments are wonderful. They're 35% of your score. But the amount that you owe, if you charge that credit card of a $1,000 credit card up to $700, you've actually hit your credit score 
and damaged it and brought it down at least 30% because you owe more than what that actual criteria is. The next one is the length of credit. I have a service to help remove negative and derogatory items from people's credit. With this service, I tell people you have to be very careful when you're talking about removing items from your credit. Well, I paid off my car loan. Why did my credit score go down? Because the length of credit history is 15% of your credit score. That car loan that you had, you've had it for the last five years. That was the oldest thing on your credit report. When that debt is no longer on there, the score recalculates and has to go to the next thing, which might have been a credit card that you got two years ago. So you've lost from five years of credit history, now you're down to two years of credit history. That is one of the things that people say, well, I'm paying my bills off and I don't understand this. It has to do with the length of credit history. The next thing is new types or new credit itself. You're going out to a car dealership, had the horrible story. I got my credit up to like 764 and I'm gonna go get this dream car I want. Went to the dealership, they pulled my credit 21 times. And all of my self-employed individuals know why. Because they did not ask me enough questions in the beginning to figure out that I was self-employed and that I did not have a traditional pay stub. So they were trying to find people for me. The max that you want any creditor or any car dealership to pull your credit is four times. Mm -hmm. You can stop it. So it's 10% of that new credit, those inquiries. The type of credit is the next 10%. That is installment loans. That is fixed. So that's your car loan. That's your student loan. That's your mortgage. Versus your credit cards. That's revolving. That means that it's open all the time. You can pay it and your money's back available to you. Those lines of credit that you may have from Navy Federal, things of that nature, that makes up 10% of your credit score. So guys, it's so important that all the pieces of the puzzle come together to make that score up. One false move can really be disheartening to your credit. Most people don't realize that if you miss one payment, it can take your score down 100 points. Well. Yeah, so it is definitely something that we have to pay attention to. And uh, cash is king, but credit is running, running it all now. It runs the world. Very good. What I saw you post on Instagram recently was that there are several items that can be removed from one's credit report that many of us thought could not be removed, like student loans, hospital bills, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you speak more to that, Renee? Sure. First of all, a lot of individuals do not realize that your student loans can be removed from your credit report. How can that happen? There is something called the Fair Credit Act. The Fair Credit Act is where that we as a consumer was getting given the power again to control what is put on TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. The way that is set up is that did you give authorization for Sally Mae, Navient, U.S. Government, um, educate, Department of Education, to put, education. Your, yeah, to put your personal information on these three bureaus? And most of the time, the answer is no. So they are breaking the law, and those items can be removed by simply having a, it's called a dispute letter. Now, I'm going to speak to this because I've had a lot of people in the friends in the business and friends and family say, well, I just went online and I Googled it. And the problem with you doing the dispute letter is there specific verbiage that needs to be put in that letter that the debt will not come back onto your credit report in six months or a year. And the problem with that is that you're thinking I'm getting ready to buy a house and all of a sudden all this old debt starts popping up. It's because you did it. Now, no knock of anybody personal. I understand that you, there's everything is on the web that you can look up YouTube and all that good stuff, but I wouldn't chance it. Specifically, I can tell you with that law, my team of attorneys, actually, when we pull your credit, we look at your individual credit report and the letter is drafted with the specific words to remove the item, 
to update your payment history, but more importantly, give you an opportunity to go back to that creditor because I'm always for pay your bills. Mm -hmm. If you owe it, you owe it. Things happen right. in life and people are more, you get more, listen, you get more bees with honey than with vinegar. Answer the phone. Talk to the people. I just don't have it today. I can work on a payment arrangement. You don't want to be getting ready to get a house and you get a garnishment at your job. First of all, it's embarrassing because your payroll department has to know, your manager got to know, and you run there looking salty because they're taking 25% of your check. So until, the pay, until it's all paid. The items that can be removed, student loans, medical bills, repos repossessions, um, I've removed uh, child support. It's amazing. Student loans and child support gets the most response from people. Wow. Uh, yes. And child support, we are not having you negate your responsibility. You need to pay. That's your baby. Right. But you should not be penalized for 20 years on your credit report or even 10 or 7 that it was derogatory. There was a time in your life you couldn't pay it. That time in your life has come and gone. So why should you be held captive? So the freedom part of the Fair Credit Act, uh, guys, allows you the opportunity to have those negative items removed from your credit report. And when they're removed, I can tell you it could take one letter up to seven letters. The attorneys will definitely change the verbiage to address what is responded, well, what is um, the response back from TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. But more importantly, I have to let people know, and this is probably one of my numbers and reason why I'm so passionate about what I do. There's 63 million Americans that have less and then a 600 credit score. Mm -hmm. And they had it on my, on my, I had it on there at 700, but because of this pandemic, it's 600. Some people just are not able to pay. And how do you rebuild? You work so hard, you know how important credit is. What do I need to do to get out of this? So there is help for you. There's help so that you're able to move forward successfully to help you and your family get out of this rut. Because I know if money's not right in my house, me and Mr. Cunningham, we have some, we, we tighten it around here. <laughs> so let's make it better. Let's make it better. I want to touch back on this child support because I have in my real estate business come across buyers who were trying to get qualified for a mortgage loan and they knew that they had child support issues in arrears. How can your company, Legacy Protection, help individuals who may have arrears child support reported on their credit reports. Some of them I saw went back decades. Can you help them? Yes, we can. Uh, first of all, what we do, once we draft the letters, we actually contact the courts. So the way the process goes is that we pull your credit report and we see everything that's on there just like a creditor. Once that information is identified and the attorneys draft the uh, dispute letters, those letters are then signed by you. Uh, providing your driver's license and proof of in, uh, proof of social security. That information is sent to the credit bureaus. The credit bureau's job is to contact that particular court. And all of us know that the courts are closed. But they have 30 to 45 days to respond. If they do not respond in that time, those items are immediately removed. That's the first thing. So that's why this business has been so successful during this pandemic. Is because a lot of things are closed. That's the first thing. Prior to the pandemic, the reason it was so successful is because the courts have found out that you have to give people an opportunity to live. Imagine if that, because uh, this goes under the judgment section, like under the right. bankruptcy portion at, right. at the top. So it weighs very heavily on your score. Once we remove that, let's say that father wants to go and get a line of credit to pay that back. You're giving them opportunity to give them life. And then like I said, they're trying to get a new home. They're trying to move on successfully. Being able to remove that from the credit report by leveraging that Fair Credit Act, um, getting that response back from the uh, credit bureaus, it allows you the opportunity to get things in order again and take care of your business. 
uh, there is a section that I have in my business and it's called Credit Builder. Credit Builder actually has uh, 10 to 20 different already PDF letters made up, drafted, so that you can, for your specific situation, let's say you want to contact the court, but you just don't know what to say. And I don't want an attorney because I want to start paying again, but I, you don't know where I work at right now. So I like to keep it that way so you don't garnish me, but you want to talk to them. So uh, the letter is set up in such a fashion so that you're able to reach out to them as a sign of good faith, saying that I would like to start you know, payment arrangements. This is the amount I can pay. And I want to pay because a lot of times, like I said, let's go all the way back to financial literacy. We weren't taught this and all it requires is you to pick up the phone or to send a letter with the correct verbiage to say, Hey, I understand I messed up. I take accountability for that, but I would like to get it right and not be uh, taken advantage of. And this is what I'm able to offer. If nothing else, 2020 has given us this clear vision because it's moved all the distractions out the way. Let's take care of our business. I love it. <laughs> I love it because you know what? People fall into situations. Yes. Situations beyond their control. Like the child support. Yes. Losing a job. Yes. As a result of a, the pandemic or otherwise death of a spouse, yes. having to take on dependents, dependents even meaning parents, which might reduce your available income or revenue, right? That so right. things can happen, things can happen and people need help. But oftentimes, Renee, as you and I both know, people are afraid to seek out services like those that you offer the legacy protection because they're embarrassed they feel ashamed they feel like you're going to treat them just like the car dealership might when they go to try to buy a car even no we can't help you it's too bad what do you say to those people two things uh, the first thing is that my company has a satisfactory guarantee within 45 to 90 days that's the basis you will see results now, those results we will talk about because each person is individually different as far as what's on your credit report. That's the first thing. Second is that with that roadmap that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. I don't ever want you to feel like you're left alone, like you just gave your money to somebody or you just contacted with us the first time and you didn't know what to do. I love the fact that people learn differently. Some people are visual, some are audible, and some people like to, to hold it and it's tangible to them. The way my system is set up, you have the ability, I don't care if it's in midnight, look at a video, this is what I'm supposed to do next, or if something called smart credit that we have. For those of you that have credit cards, you've kept some positive credit cards, but you want to increase your score yourself. We have the ability to show you out of your credit card, so you may be a Discover, a Bank of America, uh, JC Penney's, or Macy's. We show you the dollar amount. Let's say I wanna increase my credit score by 50 points. We show you, excuse me, the dollar amount to be paid, what data needs to be paid on, and which credit card will have the biggest bang for your buck. Those are things that you can't get unless you have the ability to open up your mouth and say, help, I need help. And there's no condemnation in saying, I need help. Everyone needs help. And I love it because our portal is private. I'm not asking you what's your credit score. That's between you and the attorney. The good thing about it, I'm here you to help just, walk um, the walk the You made me think of one of my favorite scriptures. There is therefore now no condemnation. You know the rest of it. I do. For those that are in Christ Jesus. Those who are in Christ Jesus. But it applies to this situation as well. Yes. And yes. so, you know... I'm really loving what I'm hearing from you because I believe, you know, that people should always feel that they have hope. There is hope. Um, as you know, I am a licensed clinical mental health counselor now. And 
During this pandemic, people, a lot of people have fallen into depression because, you know, of the changes, the lifestyle changes, the social distancing. A lot of them, though, unfortunately, have had to deal with loss of income. And it's caused some major depression. People feel overwhelmed. They feel like they don't have hope. So I'm happy to have had this conversation with you tonight to remind people that there is help available and there is hope. But as even with counseling services or any other service area where you have a need, the individual has to take the first step and seek help. So with that said, because you have shared some wonderful information, I would really appreciate it if you would tell our viewers on YouTube as well as our listeners on the various radio stations that I will share this with, how they can get in touch with you and Legacy Protection for Systems. Well, thank you so very much. Um, I tell individuals, first of all, if you want to contact me on Facebook, it's Renee Cunningham. Um, on Instagram, it is Legacy Protect. My telephone number for a personal consultation is 313-549-0918. And now, I do like to let individuals know that if I'm not able to get in contact with you, just leave a message and I will call you right back. The good thing about this service itself is that I am in the Missouri area and on Central Time. I have no problem talking to my friends in California, my friends in New Hampshire, Arizona, uh, Mexico. I don't have a problem helping you because our company is nationwide. So don't feel that you have to be captive to just this area. You can build, I can go anywhere. My services can go anywhere. Even for my military families itself. If you have a Thanks. social security number and you need help, we will help you. This process is private. You will be able to download an app on your phone to be able to look at your credit, to see where we're at in the process, to contact me. So my telephone number again is 313-549-0918. And thank you so very much for this time. This has been fantastic. So if people have questions, hey, I'm open. Yes, we're about to close here. But as Renee stated, if you have questions as you view this um, stream later after, you know, the podcast has ended today or you hear it via one of the radio stations, feel free to reach out via the various contacts means that she shared. Also, you can type a comment here on my YouTube stream. I monitor those comments and I will be sure to get them to her or point you, direct you to her, okay? So Renee, um, I'm just really thankful. Thank you for joining the Unfiltered with Cara Jones Unlimited LLC podcast this evening. You are the first professional in the realm of finance that we have had a conversation with. And I tell you, the wealth of information that you have shared is what I say adds both value and benefit. All professional services should add value and benefit. If they don't, I don't go that direction. Don't advise others. But thank you so much. Car Jones Unlimited LLC looks forward to working with you. And we want to bring you back on here. Because, you know, a friend just told me today that one of um, the entertainment, big entertainment um, venues, um, convention, the exposés that he participates in, he received notification that they will not have that next year, February, because of the pandemic. 
I know some of the eastern states have also already put out information to say that, you know, this pandemic will go beyond the first quarter of 2021. And so with that in mind, I feel that people will probably be needing this help. We, we, we hear these statistics, we see the news reports on, you know, all the MSNBC, CNNs and all that, right, about the unemployment rate. Yes. So I'm just happy that you were willing to come and share this information and that you have availed yourself to the Carl Jones Unlimited audience and the World Wide Web. Thank you so very much, Chandra. This has been a pleasure. And I'll, it will be my pleasure to come back again. I enjoy helping and educating individuals. Like I said, we got to be able to train, actually train up a generation to keep this process going because we definitely sat lack from and, and lose from a lack of confidence as well as information. So we want to keep that train going and I'll be back anytime you need me. Thanks. Thank you so much. And so we're signing off. Again, signing off tonight, this is Chandra Perdue, Unfiltered with Cara Jones Unlimited LLC podcast, broadcasting live via live stream on the Cara Jones Unlimited LLC YouTube channel from Houston, Texas, and Missouri. Mrs. Renee Cunningham, CEO, owner of Legacy Protection. Thank you so much, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. Have an awesome night. Likewise for you.